We're coming out with a commentary on the book of Genesis that's based on a series of sermons that I preached back in 1990 and 91, 100 sermons. And it was such an important time in my life to study the book of Genesis because one of the reasons so many mistakes are made in biblical interpretation is that when people go to reading the Bible, they don't start where God starts. They start with the New Testament or the book of John rather than the book of Genesis. And of course, you can't understand the New Testament without the Old, and you can't understand the Old without the New. The book of Genesis is about Christ. And so the title, Christ, Creation, and Covenant. He's presented as our Creator, our Sovereign Lord, our Redeemer, and in many historical events, you can see why those things were mentioned in the book of Genesis, to present us with Christ and that covenant bond of friendship that God has established between us and himself through faith in Christ. The book of Genesis is fascinating in the way it's organized. When we just read the book of Genesis right off, it looks like it's just a bunch of chapters, 50 chapters, a bunch of verses in each chapter but it has a very definite and brilliant organization. There is a word that occurs in the book of Genesis ten times at strategic locations. And that word, and of course it all depends on the translation, that word is, these are the generations of, which in Hebrew literally means, this is the outcome of the life of whoever's mentioned. Or this happened as a result of the life of the person uh, mentioned. So what you have in the book of Genesis, you have setting the stage in the first chapter, the stage of creation, and then starting in chapter 2, the first time you have the word, this is the outcome of creation. That's the beginning of these, what in Hebrew is called toledoths. And every section Every one of these that begin with the phrase, this is the outcome of, is organized and unified around a certain theme, a certain point, uh, all relating to Christ. And as the book of Genesis proceeds, the scene narrows down from creation to more and more narrow groups, which is extremely important because the way the New Testament starts. The New Testament starts with the phrase, this is the generation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So the scene is narrowing down in the book of Genesis until it pinpoints on Christ himself in the New Testament. I wrote this not for scholars. I wrote this not for seminary students. But I wrote these chapters as notes for me to follow when I preached. And they were all preached at a congregation various ages, various backgrounds, because as a pastor of a church, my desire has always been not only to be precise in the, and accurate in the communication of the truth, but to communicate it just as clearly as I possibly can. There are so many important things about Genesis that I try to bring out. I have a bunch of appendices in this commentary that deal with issues relating to the book of Genesis. I deal with the fact that this commentary is a historical narrative from Genesis 1 to the very end of the book. And that means that its account of creation is accurate and factual and not only gives us the reason why God created the universe but actually told us how he did it in six days after having called it into existence, by his word, it suddenly appeared. And then he shaped it like he wanted it in six days. That's the beginning. And that biblical creationism is one of the fundamentals of the faith. Because if we don't get the doctrine of creation right, we're not going to get the doctrine of redemption right. So uh, th these are some of the things that I talk about in the in the book of Genesis. I hope you'll enjoy it and I hope that any questions you have as you study it, you will feel free to communicate with me and uh, ask me your questions. But God bless you.